Okay, well, hi everyone. Thank you for joining our session today. Um, we are really excited to have an opportunity to share what we've been working on at Salesforce and shine a light on the volunteer work of our incredible open source community. Um, today we'll be following Mary uh, Crozier on her journey to create the Ombudsman Cloud Care app. And yes, you'll learn what an Ombudsman is. Um, and David and I will share how uh, Salesforce.org's open source commons program provided resources to help her and her team succeed. So I'm Corey O'Brien. Uh, I'm the nonprofit open source program manager at Salesforce.org. And I get to help our open source customers and partner community contribute to open source in a variety of ways that I'm really looking forward to sharing with you today. Mary? Oh, sorry. I have already messed up my little. Um, so hi, I'm Mary Crozier. I'm a Salesforce consultant and founder of an app <clears throat> built on Salesforce's nonprofit cloud called Ombudsman Cloud Care. I'm a super fan of creating openly available solutions to help those who would otherwise not have access to them. David? <clears throat> good morning or good afternoon. Uh, my name is David Reed. I'm a lead member of technical staff on the Cumulus CI team at Salesforce.org, where I help build free and open source tools with Python that help Salesforce teams deliver great products built on our platform. Great. Before we begin, uh, I just want to mention quickly that anyone interested in Salesforce should base their purchasing decisions on products and services that are currently available, not necessarily what will be in our presentation today. Okay, so now that we have the legal stuff out of the way, let's dive in. What is Salesforce? Well, Salesforce, it's, a, it's big, but it's a customer relationship management tool or CRM, providing a shared view of customers on one integrated online platform. And Salesforce brings companies, nonprofit organizations, and educational institutions and their constituents together into the digital age. But Salesforce was founded on three core innovations, which is cloud or multi-tenant technology subscriptions, and our focus on philanthropy through the 111 model. The 111 model means donating 1% of our time, 1% of our equity, and 1% of our product which over the years has amounted to very impactful figures. But giving back is not just a perk of working at Salesforce. It's part of our culture and a driving force behind why many employees join the company. Um, and our employees get to give back via volunteering, where Salesforce employees are given at least seven paid days of volunteer time each year, uh, from volunteering at a school to building houses in remote parts of the world. Uh, we employees are encouraged to use our VTO to make the world a better place in whatever way we choose. Um, we also have skills-based volunteering or pro bono, which is designed to put two of our greatest assets, our technology and our employee talent to work helping nonprofit organizations transform. And then via employee giving um, or employee inspired giving, um, where Salesforce employee um, were eligible for a match up to $5,000 US um, and being a Canadian, that actually is quite a bit uh, in uh, eligible match donations. But over the past 21 years, we've given $330 million in grants to worthy causes, and our employees globally have volunteered over 5 million hours and provided product donations from more than 46,000 nonprofits and educational institutions. Through our technology and employee inspired giving back programs, we're able to support communities and nonprofits how and when they need it most. But now that you know a little bit about Salesforce, let's talk about salesforce.org. Um, and that's the department, so to speak, that David and I work in. Um, we are the social impact center of Salesforce, focused on partnering with the global community to tackle the world's biggest problems. And we build solutions on top of the Salesforce platform that are specifically designed for the needs of nonprofits and educational institutions. With our nonprofit cloud products, we help nonprofits raise more resources, streamline their programs and engage with constituents like never before. And with our educational cloud products, higher education institutions gain a holistic view of every student and their constituents. Um, they streamline processes and get to create powerful experiences right across the student life cycle. And through our Power of Us program um, and 1% product pledge, nonprofits and educational institutions receive 10 free Salesforce licenses to help them get started. And they get deeply discounted licenses thereafter. 
Now that you know more about Salesforce and salesforce.org, let me pass it over to Mary. Um, she founded a 100% volunteer built and managed open source solution to help Naval Ombudsmen and their families they serve get organized uh, just when they needed it most. Mary? Thank you, Corey, <clears throat> for inviting me to share our story today. I'm excited to tell you about our case management tool, Ombudsman Cloud Care. It's an app, especially for military ombudsmen, and we like to say it's a new tool for a new era. I think you'll understand why soon. As I continue, I'd love to hear in the chat if you have a connection or a family member currently serving in the military. So let's talk about what an ombudsman is and how important they are to the command families, and most of all, why they need this tool. The most important thing you need to know is that a military ombudsman is a volunteer who serves as a liaison between the command and the families. Some of their responsibilities include providing and connecting families to resources when they're in need, engaging with the community so that families are aware of their services, and being a reliable source of information from the command. Before we talk about the technology, I'd like to first share a bit about myself as well as provide a little background on the app's origin. As you know, I'm a Salesforce consultant, and I'm also proud to share with you that I had the opportunity to serve military families as the commanding officer spouse of the USS Theodore Roosevelt, where I also served as an advisor to the Ombudsman. In February, well before anyone in our region was created, creating COVID crisis plans to help with the families of our deployed sailors, the Ombudsman and I recognized that should the worst case scenario occur, say multiple parents of young children needing to go to the ER all at once, we had little to no support for the impending needs of families in crisis. From here on, I'll refer to the USS Theodore Roosevelt as the TR. In addition to lacking local support, we were not prepared to manage what could possibly be a significant increase in families needing direct ombudsman support. It wasn't long, maybe a couple of weeks before our worst fears became a reality. The TR's four ombudsmen were using various organizational methods and communication methods that were not helping the situation. Concern became alarm as late March rolled in and the COVID crisis really picked up and we still had no one to turn to. In fact, the resource we normally turned to had closed up their doors due to COVID and stopped answering their phones. As you can imagine, with a carrier of 5,000 sailors and the fear of coronavirus on board, there were many, many more family members than normal who were desperate to communicate with their ombudsman team. I'll share that it had never occurred to me prior to these tragic events to ask how the ombudsman maintained, shared, and supported their cases to learn that they managed by pen, paper, and shared email was astounding to me. The crisis brought with it an explosive increase to the ombudsman's workload. These volunteers, remember they aren't being paid to do this job, were suddenly dealing with a 750% increase in man hours and a 1500% increase in personal touches like phone calls and emails. To make this slightly more relatable, imagine working another 60 hour job on top of your current one. We could tell even then that this increase wasn't going to last just a week or two. These numbers are averages from over three months. One day after fielding another stressful call from an exhausted and overwhelmed ombudsman, I wanted them to have a better way. I asked, would it help if you had a tool for case management where you could all collaborate on cases in one secure place? They responded with an enthusiastic, yes, definitely. And I knew that by utilizing my skills in Salesforce, I had the opportunity to help them in a new way. Wow, thanks, Mary. We'll be able to follow along with Mary's story in a few minutes, but let me take an opportunity to share more about our culture of open source at salesforce.org and the tools that Mary soon learned were available to her. Open source development is in the DNA of salesforce.org uh, in our nonprofit and education cloud products. Um, there are, these are just some photos from the earliest community meetups, what we call community sprints, 
um, you may know them as more of a hackathon type event uh, back in around 2010. Uh, in the early days, there were only a few people working on the earliest versions of our open source products. And we've gone from a few scrappy engineers building one nonprofit fundraising tool called the Nonprofit Success Pack to a full fledged range of products being used by more than 46,000 nonprofits across the globe today. And I'll share a little bit more about what our community sprints look like today a bit later in the presentation. But like I mentioned on the last slide, uh, open source is in our DNA. Salesforce.org currently has six different open source products for nonprofit and educational customers, uh, including fundraising, grant management, program management, higher ed, and K-12, as well as volunteering. And this makes it possible for our generous community to collaborate and improve upon the products in a trusted and transparent way and to build innovative custom open source solutions like Mary has that complement our products. Since the very beginning, we've watched our community contribute incredible solutions back into the community, just like Mary. And we built some pretty cool tools to make all this collaboration happen. So let me pass it on to David and he can share more about that. Thank you, Corey. Building open source products and all the more so fostering an open source community around those products requires that we have a robust set of tools to make collaboration and sharing possible. Throughout the years, as we built the Nonprofit Success Pack, EDA, which is our education data architecture, and other open source applications, we've also built a suite of tools that are designed to support building apps collaboratively on Salesforce. We call these tools the Cumulus CI suite. They're built around a core framework called Cumulus CI, and they've been steeped in open source collaboration from the beginning. We use them to build our products, including the Nonprofit Success Pack and others that you might be familiar with, and we also share those tools with the community as free and open source software themselves, not just to support the, the community around NPSP, EDA, Volunteers for Salesforce, Outbound Funds, and others, but also to jumpstart development of further community-driven products that enhance what's available to nonprofits and educational institutions on the Salesforce platform. Today, uh, Cumulus CI suite tools are used to build both open source and commercial products at salesforce.org. They're used by partners and ISVs that are part of the salesforce.org ecosystem, and they're used by community contributors who build their own applications and their own tools on Salesforce and who work with the products that we've created and shared with the community. Our tools are really designed to create space for seamless collaboration and sharing on the Salesforce platform. You can, if you're familiar with other technology stacks, you can think of the Cumulus CI suite as filling a number of roles, some of which are, are broadly analogous to tools like Make uh, or Setup Tools and PIP in the Python ecosystem or NPM for JavaScript. But we also cover a, a broad swath of use cases and support user roles that start at with developers and testers at the very beginning of product development and carry through all the way to delivery into the hands of end users who are going to go out and achieve their important work using these products. The core of our tool is Cumulus CI, which we think about as a framework for defining portable automation, automation that builds a, a tailored Salesforce environment in which a user can achieve work on an application. Once that space has been built out, Cumulus CI offers further tools for developers, for testers, but also for community members and product managers and other users to collaborate in building an application. And once some work has been achieved in those environments, Cumulus CI integrates with GitHub and with the Salesforce API to manage pull requests, continuous integration builds, and package releases. So the automation that we create using Cumulus CI spans across the whole product development pipeline and each user role that plays a part in that pipeline. On top of Cumulus CI, we've built four user experiences. The first is CCI, our command line interface that's used by product developers, by testers, and others. A second, Meta CI, is our continuous integration app that's designed just for Salesforce products and runs on Heroku. A third is Meta Deploy, our customer-facing web-based installer solution, which you'll see a little bit more later in the context of Ombudsman Cloud Care. And the fourth is Meteco, a web application that we're still developing that makes it easy for non-technical users to create contributions to a project and participate in the development lifecycle, even if they don't come from a development-oriented background. All these applications are free and open source. 
And what I think is one of the most exciting applications of these tools is supporting the open source commons, which is one of our key programs that Corey will introduce. Thanks, David. Uh, the open source commons program was created to provide these types of tools, as well as resources. Um, we can kind of think of it as an incubation framework of sorts um, to our community to make open source development easier and more equitable. We want all members of our community, not just developers, to be able to contribute. I'm so excited to work for a company that has a program vision like this one. Open Source Commons is a community of mission-driven individuals working together to solve the world's most challenging problems. And we do this by actively listening to each other, we educate each other, we bring our passion, our experience, and our technical know-how to projects that can be replicated and then shared throughout the Salesforce ecosystem. And we purposely work to remove barriers to entry so that everyone can be a part of this vision. I really love this slide because you can see the amazing faces of some of our community members. Over 300 people joined us for our community sprint events this year alone, even digitally, uh, but we had only so much room on the slide. Uh, we feel our values are just as important as our vision. We want all members of our community to feel like they can make a meaningful contribution regardless of their technical skill, their age, their education level, or their background. We increase impact by empowering teams of individuals to create solutions that serve a larger community and they scale to improve the lives of hundreds or thousands. And with innovation, we believe in technological innovation as a multiplier. Open Source Commons reduces inefficiencies, especially in teams, duplication of effort and barriers to sharing. This allows teams to collaborate and develop scalable and repeatable solutions for the Salesforce platform. And of course, inclusivity. As mentioned, we welcome all contributions. Every voice is crucial and no contribution is too small. Solutions are most effective when informed by diversity and inclusivity. Great ideas come from unexpected or quiet voices and from questioning certainty and expertise. In fact, we have an unofficial mascot named Sprinty who you can see on the screen here. Our events are so inclusive, even a T-Rex is welcome. But most contribution work actually happens during these open source community sprint events we host each year in the United States and Europe since about 2015. They're the heart or the family reunion of open source commons program, uh, which may have been apparent from the images on my prior slide. Attendees get to spend two days working together to brainstorm and develop solutions for a variety of use cases, whatever they want solve for gaps in product offerings, create or improve documentation, and have organic conversations that fuel um, future open source projects. And this year, we've had to go for fully digital, of course, but our community continues to show up and has been working on nine different projects to get them ready to contribute. Our next big virtual event is in January 21, and we're excited to include the Ombudsman Cloud Care team in that event. Now that you know a bit more about the open source community we have at salesforce.org, let's go back to Mary and continue the story of how Ombudsman Cloud Care came to be. At, uh, speaking of teams, I'll jump back in with a brief story of how our team developed. Initially, I thought, and this was pre-crisis mode, this will be a great project for me to help with. I can do this totally on my own, but I quickly realized that this was not the time to be tinkering. At the first sign of impending crisis, I started reaching out to my network. I ended up meeting Michael Kladner, a nonprofit consultant and Salesforce MVP. Within a few weeks, we brought in Shelly to be our ombudsman liaison. She exemplifies the caring and nurturing nature of who you'd want looking after and speaking out on behalf of our ombudsman. As the COVID crisis came to a head, I was involved more and more directly helping the command families behind the scenes. We soon realized the need for more help especially if we intended it to be available to many other commands and their ombudsmen. We needed more technical expertise. And as you saw from David's slides earlier, there are some release engineering tools involved in packaging that we just didn't have experience in. Our Tiger team grew to five and is stronger because we brought in different skills to the team. So let's talk about case management and what that means for military ombudsmen. Ombudsmen are volunteers, as I said, and they have zero budget to spend, and they're only authorized to be given paper, pens, and a phone. As mentioned previously, the ombudsman had some organization and efficiency problems that they couldn't solve easily using these simple tools right in the middle of a crisis. 
So we started with three primary objectives for the app. We empower them via collaboration tools instead of texts, emails, group messages, social media groups, they can now correspond with each other on a case from within their own secure system. In addition, they can share and store attachments and keep a record of all communication specific to that case. We granted them situational awareness by giving them the ability to hand off to each other seamlessly because everything about a case happens within a case as well as the capability of updating command as necessary. Lastly, ombudsman can be highly efficient thanks to automations. Standard email responses can now be sent to the most commonly asked questions not requiring direct ombudsman contact. We didn't stop there though. As with many jobs, there's the dirty work that has to be done and to be an ombudsman, you must submit monthly reports. It's one of the more time consuming duties and certainly not why they signed up for this position. This simple task in Salesforce used to take them days to compile. Now the information is <clears throat> all in one place and already in a report ready to be sent. So great, we've built this solution. Now what? How do we get this into the hands of more ombudsmen? As I said, it was time to grow. It was time to start thinking bigger. Michael being an active member of salesforce.org community brought up the idea of reaching out to the open source commons team. We debated our options. My biggest concern having been through the recent TR crisis was mostly centered around security. Understandable given everything I'd been through and my tiger team showed an extraordinary amount of patience as I came to terms with sharing the project publicly. In the end though, Choosing to join the open source commons community was in fact helping create a more secure solution. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ultimately, it was the right call for three major reasons. Security, technical assistance, and most important, validity. This is no longer our little pet project we're peddling. In addition, the open source commons program gave us the valuable resources we wouldn't normally have access to, like guidance through the Salesforce security review process, training as well as hands-on assistance with the Salesforce packaging, a logo designed just for our project. And what we're really excited about is getting to bring Ombudsman Cloud Care to the next community sprint event in January. There was obviously no better way to move forward than to ask for help. We connected with Corey here from Open Source Commons team who joined our efforts and embraced our initiative. With her support and encouragement, our team grew with the additional technical help we needed, which you will hear more about in the coming slides. As Mary mentioned, there are many amazing benefits to joining the program. Uh, we provide resources for our community-led open source projects like the Ombudsman Cloud Care app to help them succeed and be sustainable. But for anyone interested in more of the technical behind the scenes elements of what our program partnership entails, I've put a process flow here so you can see the responsibilities of the community team in green um, and what we do at salesforce.org in orange. So you can see how an app like Mary's can go from an idea to reality and in, in the hands of ombudsmen by partnering with salesforce.org. So next let's hear from David who will show us how an ombudsman can install the amazing open source application today. Thanks, Corey. So today we're really excited that Ombudsman Cloud Care is a full-fledged application. It's available and it's discoverable on the Salesforce App Exchange, which is the app store for the Salesforce platform for administrators to bring new functionality into their orgs uh, for anyone to install. It's it started as this little community collaboration, but today it's it's available on an equal footing with the largest commercial offerings, and it's been vetted and security approved, as Mary alluded to so that our users can have confidence that they're, that they're using a solution that will protect their data. And of course, it remains free and open source and development continues on the solution in the open on GitHub and is available for engagement from the community. We use MetaDeploy, which I mentioned earlier as part of the Cumulus CI product suite to offer this custom product installer to Ombudsman that harnesses the same kind of portable automation that the OCC team, Mary and her colleagues, used as they build the application themselves. 
our installer delivers the Ombudsman Cloud Care package, but it also automates setting up the sophisticated configuration that was designed by the OCC team. By handling these, these getting started tasks, we can bring the setup time for an individual Ombudsman who's getting started with the tool down from multiple hours and needing specific Salesforce expertise to just a few minutes with little to no manual effort. This makes it easy for an ombudsman, even one who's, who's brand new to the Salesforce platform, to start working a fully configured Salesforce org with Ombudsman Cloud Care and best practice configuration right out of the box. And one of the things that I think is really valuable about this delivery solution is that it's open source from end to end. The package is open source, the web installer is open source, and the automation is also open source. So ombudsmen who feel um, inspired can not only see what they're consuming and using to do their jobs, they can also become participants in the future. So let's let's shift it back over to Mary to hear more about the future of this solution. Yeah. So what does the future look like? Well, together with Salesforce.org and Open Source Commons, we have the power of community through participating in community sprints, like the one I mentioned coming up in January, individual community member contributions, <clears throat> and unlimited growth potential with the technical assistance required to keep expanding our reach. <clears throat> Why is that important even after our app has launched? Well, the Navy alone has 1,474 ombudsmen serving commands at this time, and they all deserve to have this tool. Ombudsmen from other branches of the military have also expressed interest. And last, but certainly not least, our ombudsmen using the app right now are regularly adding to their wish list. They've seen the light and they want more. So as I come to a close on the story of our app, I'll leave you with, we're more than just an app. This is a mission. We've already made significant upgrades, which I'm excited to share. They include for the military families who quite literally demanded a better system for communication, a community help portal where they can submit a case directly to the ombudsman. We also wanted to keep our ombudsman happy. We all know that user adoption can be the failure of any new cool tool. So an ombudsman training program was necessary. It introduces ombudsmen to the technology and they leave with a new skill to add to their resume. Last but not least, did you know military spouses have a 24% unemployment rate? An exciting aspect of our initiative is that all of our command orgs get a team of Salesforce military admins composed of veterans and military spouses certified in Salesforce. They're ready to help them through training sessions and open office hours. These new admins have their certification in Salesforce, but they're in need of work experience as they tra transition either back to work or into the tech field. To date, we've had four military spouses who've been able to leverage their experience with this initiative into offers of employment. Corey, thank you again for your support and over to you. Thank you, Mary, so much for sharing your story with us today. I continue to be so inspired by what you all have built. Um, I know it's been an incredible six months um, and um, I'm happy to have had the chance to really get to know you and the team, so thank you. Um, we're almost done with our presentation today. Um, we'll have lots of time for q and I think, but before we jump in, I just wanted to share a little bit more about some of our other open source commons projects. Like I mentioned earlier, we have nine active community teams, just like Mary's, who are hard at work on their own ideas. Uh, some are apps like Mary's, but others are quite different. Um, a couple I'll highlight today is the, the uh, or a few actually, would be the Summit Events app. Um, they're an events app, which started at the University of St. Thomas, and they're about to go through the same security review process the Ombudsman Cloud Care app did this summer, and they plan to be available for installation uh, later this spring. Um, we have a team called Diversity, uh, Equity, and Inclusion who started at our Philadelphia Sprint event in 2019. Uh, and they're doing incredible work in partnership with us to increase diversity at our community sprint events. And last but certainly not least, the NPSP videography team, who is our longest running active open source commons project. Um, they got their start at the 2017 Chicago Sprint and they write their own scripts, record all their own voices, and perform all video production to create short how-to videos for the salesforce.org nonprofit open source products. They have over 50 videos up on their YouTube channel right now. 
To learn more about our other projects, you can go to our GitHub org, um, sfdo-community-sprints, like you see on the screen here. Well, we hope you enjoyed our presentation today, um, but before we dive into the Q&A, um, we wanted to make sure you had some resources so you could learn a little bit more about what we talked about today. Um, I would recommend you take a screenshot of the slides so you can save them for later. Um, just remember bit.ly links are case sensitive, um, but um, I'll keep the screen up while we transition to questions. So if you have any, please enter them in the chat or raise your hand um, and or unmute to ask away. Okay, do we have any questions, Norman? Well, let's see. David, do we have any? Ooh, I do see some chat here. Okay, someone else should unmute because I'm the only one talking. <laughs> yeah, we heard from uh, Irina in the, in the chat. Thank you for, for coming, Irina, that you're interested in grants management with uh, a nonprofit and curious about our, our products. Corey can. Um, maybe give our arena some pointers in the right direction to good resources about grants management? Yeah, absolutely. Um, probably the best thing to do would be to go to the salesforce.org website um, where you can actually look at the different products that we offer for nonprofits. Um, and there you'll also find the Power of Us 10 program information. And that's the program I mentioned before where we actually donate 10 Salesforce licenses um, to qualified nonprofits. So if you are um, a nonprofit and you don't have Salesforce today, you can you can look into getting it for free. We have a 30-day trial as well where you can get a full implementation of Salesforce and our nonprofit cloud products um, and play around for a month. Um, so I definitely recommend going there. We have a great question from Shelly in the, in the chat as well. What are common misconceptions people have about open source events? Do you want to speak to that, Corey? That's a great question. Yeah. Um, I think one of the problems that we see with um, open source community in general is kind of a lack of trust and a lack of sustainability. Um, so, uh, you know, it, we've all probably heard of apps that, you know, have, we've installed or we know someone who's installed maybe a year ago or we're utilizing it or a feature or functionality um, outside of the Salesforce world. And we go and try and install it, um, but it doesn't work, or we're getting an error, or you try and reach out for support on the GitHub um, repo where you log an issue and you never get a response. Um, that's the primary problem we are trying to solve with the open source commons. We wanna create um, teams that are sustainable, that turnover can happen, that the people that install the app or utilize the features and services will always be supported. It can always be trusted. Um, so that's sort of something that we're trying to battle against. Um, also with events themselves specifically, um, that you have to be a developer, right? I think um, I'm just gonna probably actually I'm gonna stop sharing because I like seeing everyone's faces. Um, let me just transition my side. Is that okay, Norma? I'm gonna stop sharing. There we go, hi. Um, but you don't have to be a developer. Um, and as we mentioned in our sort of strive for equality and equity um, in our events is you can show up to one of our events and not really even have an idea of what you wanna work on. Um, you definitely don't have to be a developer. You could work on writing, you could work on you know, testing something, you could work as a thought leader, you can contribute your personal experiences. Um, so we actually have a, a really wide set of skills that people in our community bring to our events and it makes them much better for it. Um, so great question. David, would you like to add anything? I know you've been to a few of our events before and you're very well versed in the open source community. I have, well, I think I really just wanna emphasize that last point that you brought up, Corey, that there, there can sometimes be a perception that open source, well, it's in the name, it's about code, code that you can see, that you can share, that you can collaborate on, but always with that, um, that core identity that you can write or read or test code. And sometimes that's true, but I think one of the things that we work very, very hard on is opening up the space around code for open source participation or participation in the spirit of open source and making that available. 
know, for folks who are, who are not deeply familiar with the Salesforce platform, there's often two broad tracks that, that folks who work in our ecosystem fall into. On the one hand, there are administrators who work primarily with on-platform uh, point-and-click tools that are every bit as complex in their way as code, but which don't involve writing code as such. And on the other hand, there are developers who are more traditional um, writers of Apex and JavaScript or, or Python, in my case, code. And one of the things that I think is so valuable about our open source sprint program and some of the focuses that we put in that program is bringing those two tracks together, helping them to collaborate, giving them the tools to collaborate without putting up a wall between the different classes or kinds of contributions, putting everyone on an equal footing as contributors. Yeah. And just to add to that, before we went, you know, COVID world and we had to stop meeting in person, we had actually added a full day's worth of on-site training in these open source tools before our events with the sole purpose of bringing, you know, what is continuous integration tools, not normally, you know, in, used by admins or admins were intimidated by them or non-developers being intimidated by them. And we really wanted to bring them and just say, hey, it's not as complicated as it sounds. You can do this. You can contribute to open source using continuous integration tools and succeed. Um, and so Michael Claudner, who Mary mentioned on her team, <clears throat> has um, for the first time started using these tools over the last six months with the help of another community member, Nick, who really sort of mentored um, and helped out with the team. So we're seeing the ability for admins or declarative developers, non-code developers, really be able to drive into you know, a, a CLI type interface where they never thought they could before. Um, and I'm super happy about that, really inspired by our community for diving in. Um, we do have another question in the chat. Um, are there opportunities to volunteer for nonprofits as it pertains to Salesforce? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, there's a, a really big nonprofit community. Um, if you have a Salesforce org, you can actually log into the Trailblazer community, it's called. And you, if you wanted to get a free developer org, you can access it. Um, that's the primary community where everyone talks and chats and shares information and learns. Mm -hmm. um, and often you'll see nonprofits sort of posting for jobs sort of thing, looking for help. Um, it's sort of a double-edged sword. Um, we generally don't recommend those just getting into development, just getting into coding, using a nonprofit to, to get experience and upskill themselves because of the negative benefits it can have on a nonprofit. But if you work with a nonprofit and if they have a, you know, a couple simple requests that you're confident you can deploy, that you can test well, yes, they can be um, a great place to start to volunteer your time. Um, just be careful. Don't try and do too much or um, the nonprofit will just suffer at the end of the day. But great question. Don't forget too that nonprofits have lots of, many nonprofits have lots of volunteer needs that could be Salesforce adjacent, uh, yeah. but not necessarily doing development on the platform. For example, if you've got a nonprofit in your community that are users of the nonprofit success pack and maybe volunteers for Salesforce, they might need help with data entry. Um, they might need help running an event and logging in attendees. And those are things that you can do for them that help you gain familiarity with the Salesforce nonprofit ecosystem as, as a user and, and get a feel for what these nonprofits use and what they need to, to help yourself understand the background of how they work and, and what their pain points look like on the platform. Yep. And if you just want to learn more about the Salesforce platform in general, as well as our nonprofit cloud and education cloud products, there's free learning you can do. It's called Trailhead. And if you Google Salesforce Trailhead, I can't remember if I put it on the resources slide or not, you can walk through a point and click user interface of learning um, with Trailhead to, to learn all the things about Salesforce. It's quite incredible. Um, it helped me get my certification um, four or five years ago now. Um, and we see a lot of people posting about it on Twitter and getting their certifications from it. So it's, it's pretty cool. Lastly, um, if I can add, add just one more resource for those who are, who are looking to find Salesforce experience, make connections, find mentors, check out your local community groups. Um, I've, I've been to community groups as both a participant and a speaker in lots of cities across the United States. I've even done virtual talks with folks outside the US. They are uniformly 
incredibly welcoming, including welcoming to folks who are very new to this ecosystem. So um, the website, I think, is it's trailblazercommunitygroups.com. That's where you can find your local Salesforce community. Many cities will have an admin group, a developer group, often a nonprofit specific group as well. Check them out. They're, they're almost without exception, fantastic people. Um, you can make great connections there and learn a lot. And Norma's actually uh, posted a question here um, asking if we're about to do or if we're planning to do virtual training um, before our January event. So I'm going to look to David because your department really runs those trainings. But um, to generally answer the question, we, we we put it on pause when we had to really reconfigure, you know, in-person events to digital. It was, to be totally honest, something we never thought would work. Um, we always did in-person events um, and our community really came out and supported us and surprised us. And we've actually had almost more success doing these projects virtually um, and events virtually than we have in person, which is incredible. Um, so while we haven't yet planned a specific training for our community on the Cumulus CI suite of tools, there's nothing but um, our own sort of you know, licking that cookie to get it done, <laughs> so to speak. So I'll look at David and, and, and he can say uh, whether or not we'll do it or not. Well, if it's if it's up to me, I'd be happy to do it. Um, we'd certainly have to have to talk about scheduling and all of that, uh, but it's something I really enjoy doing. In the meantime, if you're interested in, in training resources about Cumulus CI, how to build Salesforce apps, I'd love to point you to Trailhead, which is LinkedIn Corey's resources slide. We've got a six module trail up there that you can do at your own pace to go from, from zero all the way to releasing a Salesforce managed package using our tools, the same tools that the Ombudsman Cloud Care team used for their product. Um, once you've completed that trail, you can come find a community around our tools on the Salesforce Trailblazer community. Or if you're with a nonprofit in the Power of Us Hub, those groups are both called Cumulus CI, C-U-M-U-L-U-S-C-I. So just search for that word in either the Trailblazer community or the Power of Us Hub, and you'll find our community there for using those tools. Excellent. I don't see any other questions. I'm just wondering if we have any, if anyone wants to post any last minute. Okay, great. Well, thank you all so much. Um, and uh, thank you, this has been great.